Hi, welcome to Big Idea Food Podcast. This is your host, Andrew Ive from Big Idea Ventures. So today we'll be talking to the co-founders of Actual Veggies. I don't want to go into too much detail about what they do. They do it far better than I do. So let's get into it. And if you have questions or comments, please do post them. Uh, Like and subscribe this via YouTube, via the various podcasts and so on. Look forward to engaging with you. Thanks very much. Actual veggies, how are you guys doing? Doing well. How are you? Haley, this is your cue. Oh, sorry. I'm great. <laughs> um, thanks for having us. Should we start again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, go ahead. We don't normally do a podcast with like three people, so it's going to be... Jason and I have done a few, so we're good at this, so don't worry. Oh, really? Yeah. Because you, you dropped the ball then. That was Correct. that was you. Like, okay. that I, was your I, first. I thought he was answering for both of us, so I was giving him that one. When has yeah. Jason ever answered did, for both yeah. of you? When yeah. has he ever been allowed to do that? Come on. True, that's true. Okay, let's get going again. <laughs> no, we. this is all live. This is it. No. We're not, we're not going to change this. This show <laughs> Let it fly. This shows the dynamic of like the actual veggies team. It's very cool. So let's get uh, let's get back to it. Actual veggies. Um, welcome to the podcast. Love you guys. Have been uh, you know following your journey now for quite some time. Why don't you guys tell us about uh, the company and what it is you're doing? Go ahead, Jason. Perfect. So um, what we're doing essentially is we're making the best veggie burgers that have ever existed. And we kind of hit on all the different pain points on veggie burgers out in the market. And we offer this refrigerated fresh veggie burger that has all clean ingredients and it's all completely naturally colorful. And we really play off of the different colors. So we have four different burgers that we launched with, the actual black burger that's black beans, the actual orange burger that's sweet potato, the actual purple burger that's beets, and then the actual green burger that's all your different super greens. And what's amazing is you can really see, taste, and smell all the vegetables in them. And they just, they taste amazing because they're all chef crafted by our our partner who's who's a chef. Um, but it's uh, it's been an exciting journey. I mean, almost every single day is a roller coaster, a lot of up, but obviously some down as well. So, I mean, veggie burgers, pretty horrible stuff, right? Traditionally, no? No, they're so good. Um, well, that's the great thing about them is that, like, we're finding that people who don't eat meat love them. People who are trying to eat less meat love them. They're so versatile. Um, they go in the, on the barbecue. They go on the pan. They're easy in the oven. And even in the air fryer, that's we've been hearing a lot of that. And as people are trying to eat healthy, especially during COVID times, and but also have less time available. It's a really convenient, easy meal to make that's absolutely delicious. And it's just, it's really one of my favorite things is seeing all the different ways that our customers and consumers are, are preparing it. It's like every day, it's a new, it's a new way. So my, da- my daughter is 18, soon to be 19. For the first 16 years of her life, uh, I don't think she tried a vegetable, period. She would not eat vegetables. Is this going to is actual veggies going to crack that code? Is it making vegetables, you know, interesting, approachable for, you know, kids and adults alike? Yeah, that's what's super interesting is we're also seeing people use this as not as like their side, you know, as a replacement of the veggies on their plate. Um, the colors are really good. Um, the taste, the seasonings like really add to it. And it's definitely a way to get in your daily vegetable, regardless, like I said, if you're eating completely as a vegan or a flexitarian um, as well. But it tastes great in a bun. Oh, yeah. Take, take, taking it off the barbecue, yeah. slapping some, you know, plant-based cheese on top and uh, some ketchup and just yeah. taking a big bite. Yeah. So how did you guys come up with this? This is, you know, that veggies, veggie burgers have been around for a while. Veggie products have been around for a while. You, you just sort of woke up and said, we can do this better or like, what's the story? Um, so, so I stopped eating meat towards the end of 2019 and I stopped eating meat for health reasons. My cholesterol was always high and I tried everything and eventually I was like, all right, I'm going to cut out meat and see if it helps my cholesterol drop. So immediately my favorite food was always the beef burger. So that was the first thing I was missing. And I pretty much learned that there's two different types of vegetarian burgers on the market. The first is your 
imitation meats that really look, taste, and bleed like a beef burger. But the problem is they're really processed. They have a lot of sodium, and they're called they're dubbed plant-based burgers, and they don't have that many plants in their ingredients. So they taste good, they look good, but for me, they're not that healthy, so it didn't really work for me. And then on the other side, you have these kind of like antiquated old school veggie burgers that really haven't seen much innovation or any innovation throughout the years. And they're really just these like frozen, um, like kind of hockey pucks that just sit in your freezer for months on months. And they're just not exciting. They're, there's so many pain points. They're bare, they're thin, they're small. You need like two or three to even like be cons- even close to being filled up. Um, and like we always had those in our home growing up and they literally lived in the freezer unless there was nothing around for dinner. And it was just a last minute thing to fire one of those up. And it's simply because they're just not that exciting. And they're also just not that healthy. Um, they just don't taste great. So really we, we decided that like, look, why is there not like this restaurant style, homemade style veggie burger that you can go buy at a grocery store and then cook it up in five to 10 minutes. So we created this like thick colorful veggie burger that just tastes amazing. It doesn't have any fillers or preservatives. Almost every other burger out there that you look at um, has like oils. They have coconut oils, which is really bad for you once you heat it up. They all have all these other ingredients that help the burger bind. Melicellulose, uh, eggs, breadcrumbs. We cut out all that and we just use just veggies. um, And it's just clean burger and it just tastes amazing and it just was something that was not on the market because everyone's so focused on imitation meats and we were just like hey let's make the best veggie burger out there and that's what we did so from a nutritionals perspective how do how do your products break down like you know salt sugar uh fiber you know all those good things how t- t- tell us about that yeah so they yeah. they have about like 200 calories each um uh so not high in calories, they're high in fiber, they're low in fat, um, they have a decent amount of protein, and really, we have like 50% less salts and sodium than the other players out there. Um, so that's definitely something that we're playing into, is making sure health is front and center. And what's your number one selling skew? Well, so right now, we think that, you know, so the black burger is the most versatile. Um, Again, that's a that burger that the veggie burger that our customers are most comfortable with. But it's really across the board when we have like someone try them, which one they like the best. So it's it's still probably too early to say exactly which one. So you've got how many how many how many flavors? How many colors? We have four different flavors. And then in terms of what we've sold the most, it's by far the actual black burger. But the actual green burger is starting to to creep up. Awesome. So it's kind of like 30% uh, the black burger, the actual black burger, 20% the actual green burger, and then the other guys are sort of quickly coming up behind. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's funny. The purple, the actual purple burger is probably our least sold from like a, a revenue perspective, but the fans of the purple burger are the most vocal and the most excited about it. So it's definitely a niche um, flavor. Um, you ha- uh, it's a beet-based burger, um, so people love them or hate them. But the people who love them, they really love them. And how are these things being made? Are you guys sitting around in your kitchen squish- squishing the stuff together with your hands and knees, or like? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm actually. We have a big uh, uh, co-manufacturing facility out in Denver. I'm actually there right now. We're in the midst of a big production run. Um, so yeah, we have a big facility. It's a big operation. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty exciting because like when we first started, we were just using our chef's commercial kitchen and, and we really scaled it and grew, grew quickly to be able to fill capacity over at a, a big uh, co-packing facility. And how did, how did Actual Veggies get its start? Who, who said yes to Actual Veggies first from a, a distribution or a, a sales channel perspective? So um, not to toot your horn, but... Um having Big Idea Ventures as our backers has been super helpful in making us um, legitimate in the eyes of investors and sales. Um, We definitely, we got a lot of introductions that led us to the right people um, and the right connections to scale this a lot quicker than we could have on our own. Um, So, you know, I think the idea was at the right time. Um, You know, I always say it's the perfect, you know, your dream is to get the perfect product market fit. And I think we did that. Um, you know, it's a product people want and it's a market that people want it in. Um, but really, um, all the mentors at Big Idea Ventures, we, we were not afraid to really 
you know, bother you guys all the time and ask for the right connections and right interactions to help us scale as quickly as we were able to. So who's, who said yes first? Which channel, which, which retailer, which, you know, who well, said, okay, I'm going to take a gamble on actual veggies? So we, we, the first technical place that we sold our product was a place called Pop-Up Grocer in, in Brooklyn, New York. It's a traveling grocery store. Very cool. It's, very it's one store, so, but it was very exciting. Our, our sales were, were out of the roof. It was amazing. Um, our first like real big production and our first real big order was in QVC where we launched this year, January 8th. And we sold out instantly. So that was like, that was our first like aha moment. Like, wow, like we're really onto something. This is a product people want. This is a product that, you know, the, the sky's the limit here essentially. So that was our first customer. And from there, it honestly feels like it's kind of happening overnight where orders and new vendors and new customers are just coming in like almost in our sleep. It's, it's, it's amazing. Like it's just like all the work we put in last year's laying down the foundation with Big Idea Ventures, with our other investors, with our other mentors, it's all kind of come, come into fruition now, like within the past month. Absolutely. Um, so obviously because of COVID, you couldn't be in the in the studio of QVC sort of watching the the ticker go as people are placing their orders. Because, you know, I've seen the movies where you've got, I don't know, 10 minutes and uh everything you know the orders are coming in in those 10 minutes and that's the only 10 minutes you've got at that particular point in time and the you know the the video starts or the you know the presentation starts and if you're lucky the 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 telephones start ringing the internet starts getting its orders the clock starts getting all of the numbers of all of the orders that are coming through and it's a success now you weren't there for that but i'm guessing that was pretty much the experience um, yeah, so it was, it was funny. Um, obviously with technology, it's a little different. Um, but like one thing of starting our company in March, 2020 is we don't really know the, what the reality of doing things, um, in person is. So, um, we, um, we had to sit and wait, um, a few hours until we got our first QVC numbers. And then it was just like this moment of like, really, really like, is this real? Um, it, 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 it was just, the fact that we pulled off QVC and like I said, and like Jason said, it, it really made us feel like a legitimate company. So, um, have you so. got that, have you got the video of that, that kind of that presentation on your, on your website or anything for people to see uh, the kind of first time you guys went out on QVC? Yeah. So we have the video. If you go to, um, if you search QVC actual veggies, you can see the video there. Um, and we can also put it in the show notes as well. Oh, great. So they actually keep you up on the website constantly. So you're an ongoing vendor to them. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So what, what came next after what came next after QVC? Um, so a huge sort of randomly. Um, so Hungry Root um, saw it. Hungry Root is an online retailer um, that's growing like crazy. Um, and the exact consumer we want to reach, someone who's healthy, who wants to eat healthy but and clean, but also really values like a delicious meal, um, they found us in pop-up grocer um, and they reached out and they said, you know, we want to try our burger. So we didn't even have to reach them. Um, and they did a huge order um, uh, with repeat orders every four to six weeks. Um, we've just, sh we shipped our first um, order to them, I think at the end of March. Um, and then we have another one uh, in early May. Um, and like I said, they're a great, they're a great partner. Um, their audience cares about the same thing our consumers care about, and it's just really fun to work with them. That's amazing. And I, and obviously, how you came together as a team, who's doing what roles, those sorts of things. You you've all been, you know, tied down a little bit by COVID. Although I think you guys risked it a few times. I I, I think there were certain drinks parties and barbecues and things where you guys all kind of came together and hung out. I, I I don't know whether you wore your masks then, but um, you've been able to create this business as a team uh, from different places. Uh, you, you know, take us through some of the uh, the challenges you've had. Uh, obviously. I don't know that there's been too many completely sleepless nights where it was touch and go in terms of whether the company is going to survive. Maybe there were some and, and you just didn't tell me. But, you know, t take us through some of the the obstacles and, and how you found your way around those. Yeah, I do want to reiterate for us, we 
I think one of the advantages we had is we didn't start the, co the company before COVID. So really we've only known working um, remotely and I actually can't imagine sitting in an office with my brother and Jason every day. Um, I don't know if it would be I can't helpful. imagine that either. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's something that I say is an advantage. We didn't have to pivot our strategy. Um, we didn't have to figure out like how to, you know, all these meetings that used to be in person. We don't know what that's like. And if anything, we found that like buyers and uh, advisors and investors had more time to talk to us. And so we actually feel very thankful for that. Of course, like on the, you know, obviously would not wish this pandemic on anyone or anything, but that it has, it, we did, there was some, a lot of positives that came out of it. Um, at the same time. Can I, can I jump in and, and tell the big negative that happened? Yeah, 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 you can. Right, so, um, <laughs> so just a quick story. So with, with I, I guess it doesn't matter. So with Hungry Root, our first order, this was our first like big, big production order. Um, a nightmare happened where our, one of our machines broke. And it was our, our machine that essentially takes our, our burgers, go into our trays, and then the machine will seal the burgers with film. The machine completely broke, and we had to seal 20,000 trays. Um, we lost a lot of sleep over this, trying to figure out how the hell we were going to seal these machines. We ended up finding a, another co-packer that was based in Colorado. We, tr we trucked everything over to them. They had the machine. It was working. They ended up doing it for us. Um, but it wasn't as easy as it sounded, and it obviously, it obviously cost us money financially. Um, but it, it was a nightmare. But luckily, we figured it out. We made it happen. We got the product to Hungaroo. But it was um, like an ongoing issue for almost a week, where we put all of our brains together to try to figure out a solution. And, and luckily, we made it work. Okay. So who? Uh, one, go ahead, one, go ahead, more, uh, one more nightmare that we. I thought I thought this is the one you were going to bring up. Um, so um, I think y'all know this one, but um, when we first applied to Big Idea Ventures to be in your cohort too, um, we sent you guys burgers from Los Angeles. And <laughs> oh, there you go. There's the laugh. Um, I and, still haven't still haven't tried the product. Got to tell and, you. Yeah. So there's supposed to be a burger. It's supposed to be stable. That's one of our our core differentiators is that we're a stable burger without any fillers or oil. It's or our preservatives. Um, we did not freeze, um, we did not send the burger with ice or dry ice or anything. Um, the burger was not yet stable. And um, I remember we got an email from you, Andrew, and it was like a picture of what was supposed to be our burger, but it looked like soup. And um, you, you and your humor were like, it looks like uh, the American soccer team just kicked this burger across the United States. Um, we really thought we blew our, our chance and being in the Big Idea Ventures cohort, um, thought no way would we get in without a, 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 like a product that was working um, and tasted good. And um, so it was, it was quite a surprise when we actually got the investment and uh, joined the cohort. Yeah, we, well, I mean, we invested in you guys. We knew you'd figure out the product eventually. And you have. Look at you guys. I mean, Mike Barrow, who's the guy, uh, for those that are listening, is, is our response. Uh, the person responsible for distribution sends me texts almost daily with updates on you guys. He's like, "Oh my god, they just got into this channel, this this account and that account and look, you know, they're blowing up and like he's, you know, texting me on everything you guys are are doing." Why don't you why don't you take us a little bit through the team members? Obviously, we've got Jason and Haley. What do you guys do and and who else is on the team and what are they up to? Jason. Yeah, so so yeah, I'm I'm the CEO and co-founder. Um, Haley's co-founder and president, and then Haley's brother Alex is our co-founder, and he and uh, deals with the operations and logistics. Um, so he's the director of that. So pretty much, um, we met with a lot of people when when we started, and they told Haley and myself that we should pretty much never attend meetings together, and we should always kind of be doing our own thing and and kind of carving out our own role. Um, a lot of times when we met with people like that, like we left and we were like, we were very scared. We're like, are we doing things right? Like, uh oh, um, some of those people we met with are no longer, some of them were founders of other food companies. Some of them are no longer even in business. So it's like, you kind of have to take everything with a grain of salt. So what works for Haley and, and myself is we do a lot, we wear a lot of the same hats and it just works for us. Um, we attend a lot of the same meetings. Usually I know what she's doing. Usually, you know, she knows what I'm doing. There are things that, that I kind of break out and, and kind of took ownership on as well as Haley has. Um, but our roles definitely collide and overlap a lot. Whereas Alex 
our other co-founder, Haley's brother, his role is really defined. He's he's our guy that, that deals with everything from sourcing ingredients to our co-packer to really owning the relationship with our co-packer to owning all of our logistics in terms of picking up product, shipping product, things like that. So he's really defined. Um, I kind of stick my nose in there every once in a while, but he's he's got that down to a science. Um, but yeah, I mean, Haley and I are both involved in everything from marketing. Um, when it comes to finance, I, I usually kind of take the lead on that. Um, when it comes to like social media stuff like that, Haley takes the lead on that. Um, sales, we kind of break up. Uh, we're usually both involved in it together, but there's certain people that I deal with on sales where that she doesn't. Um, but yeah, we, we really just, you know, we're kind of just every day like, what makes it so fun is like every day is different. We don't know what, what's going to happen. A lot of it's unpredictable. Um, we're learning a lot under fire and we really just work well as a team. There's no egos here. At least I don't think there are. And um, it just, it just works. Like people tell you like, you know, there, you have to do things a certain way, but we've done things the way we've wanted to do it. And it's been fun and it's working and we're going to keep doing it our way. And, and it's great. I mean, that that's pretty much how it's played out. Right. Haley is like, we, we're both kind of all over the place and, and we stay organized and it, and it works for us. Yeah. So who's the chef? So so we when we first started, we brought on um, Chef Joel, who uh, we brought on as an equity partner and pretty much brought this vision to him to kind of create these burgers. And he pretty much brought it to life in terms of just, you know, the recipes and, and making it happen. So he he's involved in everything from just kind of recipe creations and things like that. Got it. And you said you guys have roles that sometimes collide, that sometimes overlap and so on. I'm guessing you guys have never disagreed on anything. No, we, we pretty much disagree. disagree. Well, OK. <laughs> there's, I'm trying to think of a few things that, yeah, there's been a few things that we've really disagreed on. Um, but I, it's interesting. Um, there's never there's. At the end of the day, we want the same thing. Um, and like, and what, is that, and what is that? What's the same thing? We want to grow the business, and we want to make our consumers happy. Um, so I'm, I'm like, it's interesting. I think having three of us, um, usually it's two against one, and then um, that that's sort of the way that we would like would uh, solve something. Um, and then the other way that we've like solved disagreements is that we'll bring in a like a third party who's unbiased um, and that's really worked really well um, but again there's no ego um, and we really we always it 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 really just works and I, I you know I know we're a year in but um, I'm hoping that that remains the case I guess what could change the dynamic is if you guys uh, ever do sit in the same office together <laughs> that might change everything. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's why I, I moved across the country. I was in New York and Haley and I would sometimes work together, but she made me move all the way to California. So now we are we are far, far apart. Is that how it's gonna be? You're gonna be California for the rest of the company and Haley, you're gonna be New York, or are you do you see yourself Haley moving across to LA and, and joining the uh, uh, the glitterati at some point? No, um, for the foreseeable future, I'll stay here, um, and my brother will be in Chicago. And, it, and like I said, it, it works. Um, yeah, so it, it's gonna. It's really interesting. I wonder if we're gonna see this kind of group of companies that started during COVID, and and see, and and I wonder if that's gonna make them kind of totally different ways of doing business if it's going to make them scrappier if it's going to make them more tenacious than the kind of companies that needed to your point jason pivot because of covid and do things differently you guys had to build it from scratch during this thing yeah. uh it's gonna it's, it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be really interesting yeah i know that's definitely the case um like i said i really do think it just has made it easier to have more meetings um and keep our expenses down to not travel to those. You also mentioned uh, focusing on keeping, making customers happy. Um, I think it's a fantastic kind of filter for everything that you do, but where do you see actual veggies being? Uh, you know, what, what are your personal goals as a team for the next, let's say five years? I, yeah. I, it, so I'm just gonna laugh because this is actually 
probably one of the things that we argue about. Um, but I, I was like trying to remember what the last thing we argued about, and this is it. Um, so obviously, um, actual veggies is not, we don't want to just be a burger company. There's a lot you can do with the actual veggies brand. And I think it's all about celebrating um, vegetables and um, like making food delicious and making it what it is um, and being transparent about what that is. Now, when and what those product um, uh, products are going forward is something that we're still we're still tackling. There's so many different ways we can go, and there's so many different um, ideas that we have. And I think knowing when and what products to launch next with are are something that we're still discussing internally. But Jason, you can probably share some of your um, ideas, which he has a lot. I'm not going to share individual ideas, but um, yeah, I mean, that's definitely like a point of contention of when do we start coming out with new products? So like now we're starting to see traction with our burgers. Like Haley said, we don't see actual veggies as a burger company. We're not pigeonholed to doing alternative meats. We can take this wherever we want. We don't have to do what someone like uh, Beyond Meat is doing where they're just doing imitation meats. Um, we can really take this wherever we want. So that's definitely where this is heading. It's just a question of when. We have a bunch of different awesome, fun products that are getting close to, you know, getting ready to go. Um, but what's really, what's really cool, which we haven't even talked about yet, is we've had such success with these online retailers like Hungaroo. We have a couple other ones coming on board. But our big play here is is uh, traditional retail, and we are we are uh, officially launching. I guess we can announce this now. It, with um, Sprouts, they're, they're, we're launching with every single one of their 370 locations, which is another reason why I moved out west is just so we can have someone on the ground in California that really cares and can, can kind of go into the stores because most of their stores are based on the west coast. But that's what's really exciting. We're launching with them um, early May, 370 stores, three out of our four SKUs, um, and it's going to be a huge launch. They're really getting behind us. I um, mean, really, that's just the start of it. I mean, we, we had a bunch of other retailers knocking on our door, but Sprouts was just the perfect partner to launch with, and they're, they're really getting behind this. So that's where, you know, that's where things start getting exciting. One thing I would, one thing that, for what it's worth, um, I'm hearing from people who try your products that they are passionate about them. You know, it's not just, okay, it's a bland burger. I could take it or leave it. I'm, I don't give a crap when the next... Oh, damn, I said crap. That's going to have to change the, the rating of this podcast. Oh, well. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, it, when uh, people are, they bite this product, they like this product. Those who like this product love this product, right? Um, in terms of what you should do next, uh, figure out a way for what it's worth of asking your passionate consumer, right? Yeah. It, you, you're, you're building a tribe of people who kind of get into what actual veggies is all about. There's a there's a kind of a story and a thought process of why you're doing what you're doing and how it's different from anything else out there. Find those people who are your evangelists and give them some choices. If you've got, you know, five ideas, 10 ideas of what products you're thinking about next, ask the people that are voting with their dollars for you guys. That's a great idea. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if that's like a, you know, a voting or a getting people to call an 800 number or I don't know what, whatever, but there, there, there's got to be a way of reaching out to the people that are actual well, just give veggies. My, just, give my, just give my phone number. I'm happy to get those texts. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's, there's got to be some way of reaching out to your most passionate consumers and saying, you know, what frustrates you about the food you're eating today? What things do you want to see vegified? Uh, or, you know, what what do you want to see better nutrition, better quality ingredients, better, you know, taste and texture than currently is out there today? And what, you know, what do you want us to tackle next? Maybe you'll get some good ideas. That's great. Very cool. So um, next five years, still sort of in the thought process by the sounds of it. Um, are you building the team? Do you see yourselves being, you know, four plus in the, at some point in the future? Yeah, I mean, definitely looking to build onto the team as we raise more capital. That's definitely something that we want to do. But something that's been really working for us is just we're bringing in part time, essentially freelancers. And because of COVID and because we never were in a physical office, we're able to operate that way. So we found we have some amazing, amazing part time freelancers. Our designer, she is an absolute gem. She 
is incredible. Um, we don't, we're just going, you know, she's part of the future of this company. She's part time. Eventually we'll bring her on full time. Um, but we have so many other people like that and we're going to keep going down that path just so we can stay lean. Um, at first, like we were like, all right, let's build a huge company in terms of employees, have, you know, 100, 200 people. Now we're thinking more, let's stay lean. Like, let's bring in amazing people that are part time. If they work out, we'll bring them on full time. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the route that we're looking to take. And you've got enough to cope with with the US market for now, uh, I guess. Uh, any thoughts at some point in the future that you could be um, either licensing your, your kind of brand and your technology to other regions or doing it yourself? Or is that just too far away for, for now? No, we're probably about, so we, we started engaging in those conversations already um, and really um, we're probably about a few months away to re-engage in those. Um, it's definitely a, a channel that we want to explore. Um, it's just we want to make sure we're we're comfortable in the U.S. And first. Got it. What what are some of the um, challenges or gates uh, obstacles that you're coming up against right now, if any, uh, or is it all just plain plain sailing? Um, it it's yeah. I mean, it's definitely challenges. One of them is. Believe it or not, we're already looking for our second and our third co-packer because we're already getting to the point where capacity is going to be an issue um, just because kind of orders are coming in overnight. Um, so that's definitely something. We have a couple other amazing co-packers that we've been talking to for a while that we're, we're potentially going to start sending some business their way. Um, so that's definitely something. Um, I don't know. Does anything else come to mind, Haley, in terms of just like big challenges? Yeah. I mean, I think the other thing for us, it's not a, ch it, it's a small challenge in the sense that so many people want our burgers and it's a, it's a hard product for D to C. So it's, it, it's expensive to ship. Um, it's an expensive ch supply chain. And yet we want to make sure that as many people can try our burgers as possible as we're, as we're still in the process of getting into, um, grocery stores nationwide. Um, so, um, working, you know, and, it sort of takes a back seat when you look at the quantity of orders that we're getting D to C because we're not we're not focused on promoting that, but at the same time making sure that we can support it um, so anyone can try our burger is something that we um, constantly are revisiting. Given the low levels of sodium, fat, high fiber, you know the density of vegetables and and the deliciousness, I would have thought that the school. Uh, the school sector and the university sector would be probably really interesting, interested in what you guys are doing. You know, having this as a as a kind of meal one week, one day a week in a, you know, a, in a school district would probably give kids more of the nutrients they're looking for for a healthy, you know, uh, healthy uh, diet. Is that something that you guys are already talking, you know, exploring, or is that something that you'd like someone, if they're listening, to reach out about if uh, if they're in that space? Yeah. So um, exactly what you just said. Um, we have had some initial conversations. I think right now um, schools and universities are, are are still trying to figure things out because of you know how things are going to open um, due to COVID. But yeah, that's definitely a space. Food service is definitely a space that we would love your audience to inter make the right introductions to. Um, we really, um, we have we have the ability to support those and would love to do those orders. Perfect. And if those people listening want to reach out, what's the best way of doing so? Um, you can just reach out over email, um, Haley, H-A-I-L-E-Y at actualveggies.com or Jason at actualveggies.com. Um, reach out on Instagram at actualveggies. Um, bother Andrew directly um, <laughs> and he'll field the emails for us um, where, however um, you want but we're we're always willing and happy to talk to people fantastic so uh, anything that you want to, to kind of get out there that you you know you want to talk about from a, either a company perspective or you know anything that you really want to bring up as part of this conversation today yeah, I mean, I think Haley just kind of hit one of our, our points is we definitely see actual veggies going into restaurant chains. So that's something that we do need help with. And if there's anyone listening that can help with those introductions to different restaurants or anything in food service, whether it's universities, camps, um, schools, anything like that, we definitely need help there because that, that's a huge, we see that as a huge part of our, our, our future. Um, 
Um, something else that we're, we're starting to gear up for is to raise our Series A round. Um, we're not actively trying to raise that right now, but we definitely will in the next, I'd say, three to six months. So if there's uh, anyone listening that we haven't already talked to, because I know we've talked to a lot of a lot of def- different venture groups and angels in the space, uh, if, if you haven't talked to us or if you have and you want to re-engage, we would love to, to speak again or, or, or meet because that's definitely something we're, we're inevitably going to have to to raise it in, in the near future. I mean, we, we introduced various investors to you guys you know, a year ago, but the story is dramatically different in the past 12 months. The the kind of traction that you guys have been getting, the success in the marketplace, the kind of avid fans, et cetera. I think it's a very different story from when you were having those initial conversations because then it was a, hey, we've got this great concept. We've got this great range of products. Uh, we don't seem to be able to ship it anywhere right now uh, because we haven't figured that out yet. But, you know, uh, it's it's early days. Now it's, hey, we've got multiple proof points, multiple, uh, you know, in the marketplace. We've got multiple people placing orders. Uh, we're gaining revenues uh, consistently. We've got avid fans. You know, let's have a conversation. I think I think you should be in a great spot, actually. What do you, uh, I mean, obviously, you don't want to get into too much detail about this, but Series A, you, you think you'll be raising one to two million dollars, something in that range, give or take? Yeah, exactly. Right around two million dollars. But yeah, well, like you said, what's amazing is now we have orders. Not only do we have orders, we have reorders from the same customers. Um, and we really have an amazing run rate and a, a projection where we're you know doing multi-million dollars in sales over the next 12 months. So it's, yeah, it's like you said, it's a completely different story from, from where we were a year ago. And your cost structure is awesome because you don't have 100 people in the business. It's what, four, three, four? Yeah, there, there's four of us and then just part-time people, exactly. Wow. Okay. I should reinvest. That's what. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, we don't, yeah, yeah. This is actually an investment call. Actually, we'll do the next round. Don't worry about telling mm-hmm. anybody listening. Don't bother about investing. We, we're going to do the whole thing. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, reach out to Jason and Haley if if this is you know, a story and a, and a mission that you're inv- interested in, if you're interested in a company that's growing very, very quickly. And it's, I got to say, um, I would say nor- normally it's a delicious product. I've tried it. I haven't. But lots of people I know have and they rave about it. So, uh, you know, it's a delicious product and it's a great business. You should engage with them. Um, and Andrew, well, well, Jason will uh, ship you some product directly from the uh, co-packer right now. I will or you will. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure it can get that far, man. I, I don't I don't believe you anymore. I've given up. Yeah, I've given up. <laughs> so you mentioned that your uh, that Haley's brother was doing the uh, the kind of co-man, the ingredients, the sourcing, that sort of thing. So why is your you know why is your capped t-shirted body sitting in a co-man facility in uh, in in the the state that you're in right now uh why is he not there doing this yeah he's on he's on the floor yeah, he's, he's actually the, doing the work um, oh okay there's two yeah. of you there yeah so we actually have a, a meeting with the owner of the the co-packing facility so i flew out for that um but yeah alex is here he's been here longer than me he's he's downstairs i, I see him now he's like carrying box he's carrying our master cases and stacking them on the pallet so he's he's working so let's see how much money you guys are making and if you're truly bougie are you guys um, sharing a hotel room or are you in separate hotel rooms? We are in separate hotel rooms. Oh, my God. You've hit the big time, man. Yeah, we finally made it. But, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, but they have the, their meal budget is $10 a meal, and that's one a day, and the other meals are the veggie burger. So. Absolutely. <laughs> what, else, what else do you need to eat? It's, you could eat th- breakfast, lunch, and dinner, actual veggies, right? Yeah, if, if you saw what our, our our salaries looked like, you would understand why we are eating our product every single day. <laughs> you got to make sure it's good that way, man. Uh, you know. <laughs> All right. So I think this has been for me. This has been a great call. Uh, I think we've covered off the key things. Actual veggies. You guys are amazing. Uh, if anyone wants to reach out to you guys, whether it's about uh, telling you telling you how great your product is because they're consumers, whether it's retailers who want to stock. Uh, the, probably the first delicious uh, plant-based, uh, vegetable-based burger uh, to reach out to Jason at 
actualveggies.com or Haley H A I L E Y at actualveggies.com or via Instagram actualveggies or via actualveggies.com. Um, if you're an investor, um, run, don't walk because these guys uh, have a great growth rate and a, tr- a great trajectory. And they're st- I just have a problem with the word trajectory. My teeth just don't allow me to say that one. So, um, yeah, you guys are going to be opening up your Series A in the next few months or so? Correct. Okay, it's now April the 15th. When this goes live, uh, you may actually either just be about to start your Series A or be in the middle of it. So we'll try and get it out a little earlier so that people who are interested in you guys can uh, find out about it before you're going through the investment cycle. Great. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Anything else to add before we uh, press stop or pause and just say goodbye to each other? Yeah, this has been great. A lot of fun. Why, why are you so locked in on New York, by the way? If if no. everyone's deserting you and running across the country, uh, why? Wow. Haley has a boyfriend in New York, and yeah. they're locked. So I'm stuck here with my boyfriend. So <laughs> luckily, um, but yeah, no, it's it's good. All right. Well, uh, maybe you can drag him with you at some point. Exactly. There you go. Work on him. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. This is uh, Andrew from Big Idea Ventures and Actual Veggies. Uh, do reach out to them if uh, if you want to just say hello to Jason or Haley. If you want to get involved in in what they're building uh, in one way or another, I, I'm sure they'll appreciate it. I'm going to press pause, and we are going to. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with the co-founders of Actual Veggies. Great team cool people doing some amazing things. So if you need to reach out to Actual Veggies, they gave you lots of ways to do so. If you want to reach out to me, Andrew Ive, your host from Big Idea Ventures, please do come along to bigideaventures.com. That's it. Uh, I've enjoyed the podcast today. I hope you have. If you've got questions or comments, please do reach out. Uh, We want to hear from you. And uh, please like and subscribe and uh, tell your friends, your relatives, people you don't even like very much, tell everyone. Uh, Thanks again. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Look forward to speaking with you all next week. Bye.